Good afternoon. Welcome to the last session of the Smart Note Talks final conference. I'm Vladimir Lubaskin and I'm going to present the Smart Note Talks data strategy and relevance for nanoinformatics and nano safety projects. So I'm going to overview the main uh, results of the Smart Note Talks uh, project. And the, the results and, and findings are at different levels and different dimensions. First of all, uh, I believe we contributed uh, a lot to the concept. So we, we tried if a mechanism-based toxicity assessment uh, is possible and, and try to demonstrate it by uh, doing in-depth uh, research in, into specific uh, adverse outcome pathways. And uh, now, uh, as you saw, we're trying to develop the uh, test based on that. And uh, as such, uh, members of our consortium are now members of uh, patrols and will continue working. We saw already some uh, promising advancements on that. And already within Smart Non Talks, we're going to show uh, a number of ways to test for key events and initiating events. Then we work, worked a lot on methods and, and protocols. So you, you saw quite a advanced uh, results on nanomaterials labeling, uh, tracking, post-uptake characterization. So we really can get the picture time resolved from the initial contact into the uh, interactions, intracellular, extracellular interactions, tissue interactions, and so on. Th that was the idea, to understand the mechanisms of, mechanism of action and to relate those specific mechanisms and responses to nanomaterial properties. Then we've uh, worked a lot uh, with the vitro cell specifically and uh, surfactant uh, experts uh, to develop further air liquid interface exposure uh, models. And uh, I believe th those uh, systems uh, will get some improvement uh, based on our uh, research. You saw that it's possible to quantify the exposure. It is possible to improve resolution techniques. Then we've advanced a lot by nano interaction modeling. So we made a huge effort in, into uh, calculating, evaluating nano bio interactions from first principles. If we just know the uh, chemistry and, and structure of a material, that is already enough. Uh, for us to make uh, some predictions. And those predictions work. You, you saw already from uh, some results that Mark has demonstrated and you see uh, late Nick demonstrated, and you see later in Sasha's presentation that it, it indeed helps us to understand what's going on. Then we uh, worked a lot on pathway analysis, uh, uh, extraction of gene regulation networks and omics data processing. So you saw a, a new ways of how we, we could use that information uh, to uh, predict uh, toxicity of nanomaterials. We developed some models, uh, statistical models uh, in, in silico QSRs for initiating events, key events, uh, for example, uh, that one for inflammation, neutrophil influx, uh, or uh, prediction of uh, pathways uh, with, with the uh, excretion and uh, endocy uh, endocytosis of nanoparticles. Then we've developed protein adsorption and corona models, and we've generated a lot of data. So I will discuss that uh, later. And a few slides have uh, given an overview of kind of data we've generated. Uh, from in vivo, we worked on histology, omics, and uh, all kind of uh, processed uh, omic data in in vitro uh, cell culture uh, toxicity assays and tracking uh, corona and so on and in silico we work in bio nano interactions and the main uh, bodies that uh, directly uh, take in our models and data are specifically patrols you, you see the the uh, concepts and uh, some ideas the information about uh, adverse outcome pathways. Nanocommons. Nanocommons is the IT infrastructure that is already hosting uh, some of our models and will host more. So we're going to port the models we've developed, predictive models, uh, physics-based and statistical models into Nanocommons platform. Some of those will be further developed and integrated into nanosolvent projects. 
and we also worked uh, together with the OECD working group on uh, nanomaterial manufactured nanomaterials and uh, specifically we uh, contributed to pushing forward the AUP supporting the uh, agenda on AUP development and use for regulation so uh, the, the paper summarizing the uh, meeting that was organized in September last year is already in print and nanomaterials should appear in the next uh, couple of days, uh, I believe. So if I uh, continue on this, uh, to, to uh, tell in, in more details where we already placing the results of uh, a smart nanotox uh, project. Uh, first of all, so you, you saw five respiratory adverse outcome pathways. Uh, we worked on even more, but uh, say five have been submitted for our Radian AOP Wiki, and one, one more is under consideration. We've identified a number of key events and molecular initiating events, and you saw specifically that it, it was really beneficial to look at the, all the AUPs together, because if we uh, make this map, those we see that many AUPs share the, the same events, initiating events and key events. When we understand this, we can build a much more economic and much more efficient uh, test systems because we, in in one go, can address a variety of adverse outcomes, uh, outcome pathways. Tools for detection of uh, key events and initiating events, specifically from the transcriptomics data. Uh, already hosted by uh, Nano Commons, we're going to develop them even further within that project. Then, uh, omics uh, profiles that has been obtained for in vivo respiratory exposure. When they're produced, they're routinely posted to Geo database. They can be found. O of course, it, it uh, would benefit a lot from linking those data sets to uh, other databases like material characterization and so on. But and most of them, I believe, are uh, posted already. Then, air liquid interface systems that I mentioned already, uh, like Vitrocell is, is development, they should be available uh, from uh, Vitrocell, uh, updated and integrating the, the ideas that uh, we've developed uh, during the projects. Analysis protocols for inference of gene regulation networks, uh, identification of core regulatory genes will be. Uh, Ported to Nano Commons knowledge base and will be available uh, for everyone. So th that base will be open uh, for, for the community. And, and tools, uh, as they are added, uh, more of them will be made available. But also, you, you should also refer to Smart Nano Talks website uh, for updates on those uh, data and, and tools. Uh, for nanoparticles, you saw uh, labeling techniques. And they are uh, available either from uh, Ljubljana Group, what Janis was showing. So on their website, uh, I will show you later on the, the front page of that. Uh, you, you can see the, the tools and, and the data. Uh, then on Smart Now Talks website, it, it is also uh, linked uh, to that. Protocols for Corona analysis, uh, that, that's Smart Now Talks website. Algorithms for image analysis, colocalization, also from uh, Joseph Stefan Institute. Uh, protein Corona uh, tools are in Nano Commons uh, knowledge base. Tracking techniques and post uptake characterization, it's Joseph Stefan Institute, but all of them also are available through Smart Nano Talks web website or are up on request, so some in, in progress, probably. Then, in terms of simulation, atomistic coarse-grained force field for uh, common materials. So we've characterized a variety of those. Uh, specifically, we, we worked on various uh, titania, various silica. You, you, you saw that list already when, when Nick was uh, presenting. Uh, now, iron oxide, uh, carbon nanotubes, uh, quite a variety of carbon nanotubes. Now, carbon black and iron oxide are, are coming. So th th this will be covering overall about 60 uh, specific uh, nanomaterials. But force fields developed for those materials will be accessible through nanosolvate, and we will work with the, that project to integrate those force fields in the open chem. 
uh, system so, so that they could be easily imported into simulation packages later on. Or they, they can also be obtained through Smart Talks website. Simulation tools for Binon interface will be made available through Nano Commons knowledge base. Uh, descriptors can be also extracted through these tools in the Nano Commons knowledge base. And the database of Binon interactions, we are working on, on that now. I, I will comment in more detail in the later slides. Okay, so uh, then for industry and regulation, various uh, things are there, and we were trying to uh, do our best to put it into publications and to opinion papers and AUP uh, uh, roadmap, uh, which is now uh, will appear in, in, in nanomaterials. It's like a community statement on, on the further steps uh, necessary to say state of the art and, and uh, further steps necessary to develop AUPs and into a regulatory uh, tool uh, for nanomaterials. And of course, the, the, the uh, mechanisms, uh, toxicity mechanisms and, and so on uh, will be uh, available for, from publications. They, they are coming from uh, these discussions like, like this meeting and they are published in multiple papers uh, mentioned today. We promised uh, as a project to publish at least 40 papers. Uh, at the moment, I think it's already 55. So I expect overall it's going to be about 70 papers uh, in uh, refereed uh, journals, refereed papers uh, published uh, based on the material of Smart Nanotox. So uh, materials, I just, just to remind you, so the, the, this is our assortment. So we have 16 different titania, rutile anatase, spheres, tubes, and cubes. Uh, then uh, quartz and silica, the three materials are more for silica and, and quartz, DQ12 uh, specifically. Various metal oxide, including zinc oxide, zinc uh, ferrite uh, iron oxide. Uh, carbon blocks like Printex, cited today many times. 28 different uh, single wall and multi wall carbon nanotubes and three different graphene and graphene oxides and, and uh, also asbestos. So you, you see, uh, we covered quite a representative uh, selection of those. So, what uh, one of the, the goals in, in uh, studying all these materials was to create a foundation for uh, nanoinformatics. And nanoinformatics, that's an extension of cheminformatics predicting properties of, uh, say, solutions or individual molecules based on their descriptors. In nanoinformatics, uh, we follow the, the same idea and the same goal. So this uh, progress of the field and main definitions are given in nanoinformatics 2030 roadmap that you can find on nanosafety uh, cluster. Uh, web page, we just uh, Google for it and you'll, you'll find it. And the, the general idea is as follows. So we collect data using in vitro, in, in vivo, or in silico characterization of materials in the databases. So we use those data properly annotated and interlinked. And then we process the data to find correlations and make predictive models for various functionalities. It doesn't have to be toxicity as such. It could be other functionality used, for example, for nanomedicine. Why not relate descriptors of nanomaterial to uh, their functionality? For, for nanoinformatics, we were working, also having that in mind, and we were trying to uh, identify the nanomaterial properties that are relevant for uh, prediction of toxicity. And we generated a, a lot of properties, a lot of descriptors by measurement, for, for example, ROS production activity or BT surface area, and uh, simulation, uh, like a, a hydration energy or absorption of biomolecules. So a variety of novel descriptors uh, appear in our papers already, and uh, more papers uh, are in, in progress on, on that. So we, we're trying to uh, capture binary interface and surface activity of materials which we consider the most relevant for prediction of toxicity. 
Uh, then we uh, developed methods of in silico nanomaterial characterizations. One, these methods are formalized and automated. The same method can be re reused to generate similar descriptors for other materials. We are trying to port that within nano commons and nano solid projects to uh, knowledge bases, so that the tools in silico tools are, in particular, physics based, uh, available for the community. Uh, and then we also developed mechanism aware uh, QSARs. Mechanism aware, meaning that we are addressing specific initiating key events of that. And th then w one of the ideas is grouping of materials. You saw in presentation of the Thomas, uh, Thomas, for example, uh, today, how they can be grouped based on uh, by relevant uh, activities. So the kind of data I, I wanted just to show you a bit in, in more detail, so, so you know what it is and you, you can look specifically for this kind of data in the uh, on the smart now talks web page and in in our publications so we have inhalation and in installation experiments so those in, in vivo were done rats mice uh most of the experiments co are covered three uh, time points and uh, three different concentrations so we have quite a variety of data so you can do uh, those response and and uh, uh, progression of the response uh, time resolved and uh, th this is the activity that continued the previous activities uh, for example in nanoreg and uh, other uh, projects so we, we did within smart nanotox 15 uh, nanomaterials so the, the table of those it, it's a, a table from our uh, data management plan also you, you can check it on on smart nanotox web page uh, listing uh, kinds of data that uh, are there. But uh, posting of this data is in progress. So we are uh, working uh, together. Sorry, I have to uh, mute whoever is speaking. Okay. To be yeah, please. Yep. Okay, so. Uh, We, we will. Uh, uh, we, we are working with the Nana Commons project in the uh, annotation and uh, uh, publication of, of those uh, data. Then uh, you saw also the, the, this uh, diagram uh, today. This is available th through publications and geo uh, database. Uh, if we talk about in vitro data, the types of data, you also saw the, these kind of things today. First, we, we did uh, a study of uh, omics in vivo and in vitro, then a nanoparticle tracking uh, using the, the methods developed in Ljubljana, high resolution microscopy, and uh, these are liquid interface systems, but also submerged uh, systems. Uh, the, the kind of the data sets that are available are uh, listed in this table. Uh, what, what was not shown on pictures is, for example, a surf, uh, surfactometer, as was used in Copenhagen to, to measure the surface activity of uh, uh, nanomaterials. And uh, types of data, you can also check uh, this table uh, later on to see what, what kind of data is will be available. Some of them are available immediately, but we also need help uh, from nanocommons uh, projects to uh, annotate uh, and put them in, into the database. So we started that work. I hope it, it uh, will not uh, take too long. I, I just wanted to say that we, we got a confirmation from the commission today that we, we get another three months extension. So officially the project will run until end of September. So we should be available until then. But uh, at, at that point, we, we should finalize the, the integration of the data into the database and import into the database. Uh, well, the, the, the kind of things we had to develop ourselves, and I, I think it's marvelous work, uh, is, is the data uh, from Ljubljana Group specifically in collaboration with, with UCD. So you see the front page of the portal where we uh, put the high resolution imaging data and other characterization data obtained on that. So, so we had to develop our own uh, schema and, and search interface uh, for that. And uh, 
you, you can uh, enter this web page and, and check what is available. So these are quite untypical data, but I hope as the measurements are done for the same materials as in Nanoreg, uh, we should be able to link uh, this data for, to, to the same materials. Uh, say a uh, set of carbon nanotubes is all familiar. Everybody is, is using it from NRCWE and the, so some of the data are also there. So the, the, this is how it works with in terms of uh, description. And you, you see uh, a lot of information is there, uh, quite systematic. So there is a search interface that, uh, and, and, and browse interface that you, you can use to, to explore the data. Physically, they are some of the of them are stored in the geo database. Uh, so some were thinking of uh, putting it into a nanomapper format, but it's progressing more now within a nano commons uh, knowledge base. And uh, we are posting uh, the data uh, simulation data to uh, Zenodo uh, specifically, and then those data uh, could, could be linked. Uh, to the specific uh, materials as well. So in silico, we have molecular simulation data of different kinds. It's, it's like absorption multi-scale model. Uh, then then uh, we have uh, absorption uh, atomistic models. So we have uh, uh, processing uh, of processed uh, data of omics and we have uh, QSARs. So you see in, in, in this uh, table, uh, types of data that we are uh, generating. So as of now, it's again Nano Commons and Zenodo uh, linked to uh, Smart Non Talks website where you can find them. So the kinds of data we, we generate and, and it can be found uh, there are potentials of mean force, absorption maps, absorption energies that you saw could be used for uh, prediction of. Uh, inflammogenic activities uh, of, of nanomaterials, uh, hydration energies, uh, and uh, uh, lipid absorption uh, energies as well. We're trying to annotate uh, those, and uh, what you see here is a typical uh, MODA descriptor. It's a simulation uh, data, modeling data de descriptor for a simulation set. So we, we generate uh, the, the, the numbers and graphs and tables, uh, as I showed on the previous page, but we have to annotate them. And we, we use uh, existing ontologies where, where possible or developing new ontologies to annotate uh, the data and explain how they are, are obtained. The challenges we meet are as follows. So in some cases, we still need to work hard to uh, define all the terms, new terms. We, we use new descriptors that we generate uh, entries for those that do not exist in the databases, but we need to give them a, a proper and unique uh, description with the uh, proper reference to MODA descriptors so that they could be regenerated or uh, checked by other groups. Uh, one, one of the problems, non-conventional methods and data types, uh, partly we solved the problem as, as I showed you on the in vitro data. And uh, for in silico, we're working on that. The next step is, is semantic mapping, how we actually uh, map simulated material, which is approximated and mod idealized model onto uh, real material. Partly the problem has been uh, solved, but uh, we will extend it uh, further. For simple materials, at least, it, it, it now works at the, through NanoCommons nano uh, knowledge base. So we, we can pull out the specific real uh, material and do a calculation uh, for it. And uh, finally, I list the further actions. Uh, for July, September, as we got the extension, we will continue to, to work with the, with the Nano Commons project uh, to integrate already obtained in vivo and in vitro data uh, into the knowledge base and make it uh, available. The, the most important thing is, of course, linking the data we obtained to already existing databases for the same materials. Then in silico data, we uh, will work also with the nano commons on data organization and storage and semantic mapping. So it, this is a different uh, tr uh, transnational access uh, projects. And 
uh, most of the data will not be available immediately for use for the general public, but uh, as we uh, promised to make it available, so we are participating in uh, open data pilot, all of the data generated will be available in, in the matter of several months. So the, the plan is uh, they, they could be linked and integrated through Nano Commons knowledge base. Uh, maybe also Isolt later can, can comment on this. And uh, uh, software tools will be available either for uh, Nano Solvit uh, projects, uh, uh, probably also by the uh, QSR uh, workbench, you can find uh, them useful or Material Studio.